All right, welcome uh, to this segment of the news review. I want to take a look at the stories making headlines. I guess I uh, will be begin by taking a, a snapshot of the newspapers and the headlines of the Daily Nation. We have Jubilee and NASA clash over free education. We'll be talking about that as well. Uh, top story in our bulletins yesterday and today, uh, some, uh, some cause to worry. Well, we'll find out when NASA is uh, asked to shelve their strike plan. Uh, at least we have uh, the deputy governor here because it is the Council of Governors versus uh, SRC. We'll be talking about that as well. Uh, the Raila team raids Rutgers back here. There was some little bit of some fracas there. Uh, we we'll also talk about that and most of And to help us uh, put these matters in perspective, we have the Deputy Governor of Nairobi, Jonathan Mweke. We also have uh, Njogu Barua of Gishugu, Member Parliament, Karibu Sana. We'll be sana. expecting yeah. Arim Savula of Lugari as well and uh, Yusuf Hassan of Kamkunj a little bit later on uh, to help uh, steer this conversation forward. <laughs> but I guess, uh, gentlemen, let's begin with the first one, which is the looming health crisis. And we seem to be. Uh, back here again, and I'll we'll just take a look at the story uh, that was filed uh, yesterday, and then we'll be back to take a look at uh, this matter more. Shenzhen public health facilities are grappling with the possibility of yet another strike on Sunday as the deadline issued by the country's nurses looms. Starting midnight, at least 25,000 nurses in public health facilities across the country who fall under the Kenya National Union of Nurses are set to down their tools. <laughs> The bone of contention, a collective bargaining argument that is yet to be effected by the government. In December 2016, the union signed an agreement with the Ministry of Health and the Council of Governors, ending a week-long strike. Parties agreed to expedite the conclusion of a harmonized collective bargaining agreement. <laughs> Under the deal, nurses were to benefit from improved terms of service with a health service allowance among the expected perks. Months later, the CBA is yet to be signed with the nurses claiming to have received a health service allowance just once before it was discontinued. In the face of these allegations, authorities now shifting the blame to each other. The Council of Governors claims it did its part, concluding negotiations between the nurses' union and the county government, after which it forwarded the document to the salaries and Remuneration Commission for action. In a letter dated 31st May 2017, stumped urgent, the COG Chief Executive Officer Jacqueline Mogeni expressed her concerns to her counterpart at the SRC. Mogeni imploring the SRC to give the green light on the agreement. The SRC could not be reached for confirmation. In a statement, however, the CEO has asked nurses to stop piling undue pressure, saying the process will be through as soon as SRC provides a no objection letter. The possibility of another strike a cause of concern for Kenyans coming a few months after another strike by doctors and nurses brought health services to a halt. With just 64 days to the general election, the threat could not have come at a worse time for Jubilee as it could become yet another talking point during the campaigns. On 28th of May, doctors gave the government a 16-day notice to complete negotiations on a collective bargaining agreement or face another strike. The latest threat coming a day before workers under the Kenya Union of Domestic, Hotels, Educational Institutions and Hospital Workers begin their strike. The union accusing the Ministry of Health and the Board of Kenyatta Hospital of non-payment of emergency call allowances for clinical officers and health service allowances for health workers matters that remain unresolved hey, so of course that story uh, bringing uh, of course a cause of concern the latter part of the story talking about how it might be a problem from Jubilee coming a few days election but uh, the bigger picture of course is the, uh, you know what we saw last time uh, when this strike happened the country was literally brought to its knees and now we have uh, this back and forth once again so I, I'll start with you uh, but Deputy Governor between because the Council of Governors is blaming SRC, says, look, we've done our part, but you guys need to help us as we go ahead and sign this uh, collective bargaining agreement. So, what are your comments? Yeah. I don't think it's a matter of uh, blame, Willis. First of all, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a matter of blame, it's a matter of process. Mm. Uh, and that's why, you know, we should be asking the nurses just to give us a little time as councils <laughs> to be able to complete the process. Uh, you recall when the doctors were on strike, uh, somewhere in the middle, the nurses also wanted to go on strike. 
but uh, the national government, the county governments came together and agreed on some short-term measures, uh, some of those uh, allowances that you're seeing the nurses are talking about. It was implemented very quickly to avoid a, a total health shutdown, right? Uh, and once that was implemented, the counties didn't have the money, of course, in the budget. The Treasury was able to fund the counties, and the counties paid the nurses the allowances you've had that they've been paid. And that went uh, pretty, pretty fast, and everybody was happy. Then the SRC wrote to both us, the Ministry of Health, and the Public Service Commission, and said, listen, you just did something with salaries, and you didn't let us know. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are the SRC and anything to do with salaries or remuneration for public workers must come through us even though it's been decided by two parties it still must come through us so that we can advise so that we can be able to <coughs> put an audit on the wage bill which is our responsibility as the SRC uh, so they asked us uh, with a lot of respect next time you do something like that please pass it to us for advice and that's exactly what you're seeing the Council of Governors is talking about. Mm -hmm. So we've sat down, we've uh, agreed with the nurses on some sort of a CBA, and now we need the SRC to look through it and say, listen, we have negotiated this kind of salaries or benefits for the nurses. Can you approve so that we can move forward? Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a matter of, of process. Right. And once the SRC is able to get back on that, then we should be good to go. Mm -hmm. right. And in your view, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Good morning. <coughs> and, um, uh, from what the deputy governor has said, it's clear that uh, whenever the county governments and national government work together, there is always progress. Mm -hmm. I think listening to him is like uh, they were able to, both the county councils of governors and the national government, were able to come up with a short-term measure that prevented the nurses from going to strike. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would like <coughs> to say in my opinion is that, uh, I like to everybody's opinion, that um, for nurses to go on strike is a very bad issue. It's going to be like a national disaster. It's a matter of life and death. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would just call upon the Council, Council of Governors and national government to come back again together. See where we can get another long, t and in this time a long-term solution to this issue which has been running for many years. Not just the last four years, but since it's better, the nurses have been going to strike on and off. Uh, the interesting twist is coming from SRC. Mm -hmm. It is telling the council that the, the county is not to pay unless they go through the commission mm -hmm. and then the commission is not acting in speed so what I would like to do to say and request is for say SRC to come out clearly and as soon as possible before these guys go on strike and say this is our position mm -hmm. as it is now the bank does not stop with the Jubilee government does not stop with the county and council of governors it is stopped with the SRC, SRC mm -hmm. because it appears now the other ones who are putting everything on hold mm -hmm. I think that's my take and uh, I'll call the on again on the SRC <coughs> Sarah Seven to come out clean and clear before may maybe midday today and tell us and tell the nurses please don't go on strike because we are preparing this package on for you because it's like it's committed itself. It has already dug the county government from paying. Mm -hmm. Dug the national government. Mm -hmm. If they, they have done it as a commission, let us take the full responsibility. Mm -hmm. Let them take the full responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's my take. Yes, and there was, there was a time there was on this <coughs> panel, there was a discussion about the you know, health being devolved and uh, whether it should have been devolved and, and such like. Uh, I wonder if has any position uh, changed? Uh, you were at a time you said maybe you should start rethinking during that time because there may be a think whether we should have devolved it I think uh, there was that thinking and the, the way it's coming out from counties and me I'm more familiar with the Kenya county where I come from right. I'm sure right. Mweke is on top of issues in Nairobi mm. I think the county governments given the Kenya is a case Kenya county is a case has not demonstrated the adequate capacity to handle some levels of hospitals. Mm -hmm. And that is where you are saying that we were suggesting as members of parliament that uh, it would be better for us to devolve as a country, not as a country to devolve the health services systematically mm -hmm. as the county government with the capacity. You know these governments are only four years, uh, four years old, they have to put structures, get money from national government, test the system and have it to be working. Through that, so, so far, we have not reached a situation whereby the county governments can handle like level four hospitals. Mm -hmm. I know the health is fully devolved, but we should devolve this, uh, devolve the county, as a country responsibly <coughs> together uh, in a mm -hmm. specific time frame. Mm -hmm. We cannot be stuck 
uh, okay, we should abide by the constitution. But if the constitution is giving us some um, uh, uh, hindrances, then we as a country has come to a position, sit on a round table, and say we can go around it. At the moment, I still insist mm -hmm. that the county government, at the moment, are not able to handle level four, level five hospitals. Mm -hmm. And I think that the abolition should be done systematically and gradually so that everybody can benefit and the best service can be offered to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, can you <coughs> comfortable as the county to handle? Uh, I know you're more case specific to, <coughs> to Nairobi, but then uh, in general, do you think that there is enough capacity to handle all the levels of hospitals, like you say, level mm -hmm. four hospitals, level three hospitals, as well as uh, something they have? For us in Nairobi, we've done pretty well uh, with, with, with healthcare. <laughs> we found uh, only 85 health centers in Nairobi. Uh, we've increased that to about 105. We found zero healthcare centers that were open 24 hours uh, in Nairobi. Now we have 17 of them. And with that, well, it's what that did is it created a lot more jobs <coughs> for the doctors and the nurses. Um, we've increased now the doctors from 180 that we found in 2013 to about 297 and the nurses from about 1,300 to about uh, 1,500 and something. So we've added about 200 more nurses onto our payroll. Uh, we now have drugs, medicine in our hospitals throughout and health centers throughout. Uh, but what's most important is the number of people that we see. Um, will this be see almost half a million people a month. And if you divide that into the minute, every minute in Nairobi, we see 14 patients across the city. Uh, so our hospitals are pretty, are pretty busy, and we've really improved healthcare around. Um, we've concentrated a lot on maternal health, because a lot of uh, mothers were not giving birth the way they should. They were dying on the way to hospital. Uh, some of them were losing their babies and so on and so forth. Uh, now in Nairobi alone we've put over 150 new maternity beds in our hospitals. Mm -hmm. So for us I think <coughs> that we've really done well in healthcare and I can be confident to say that if health had remained a national function Nairobians would not have benefited the way they've benefited now from the gains they have made in health. So health being devolved has helped Nairobi. Coming to this strike issue, if you look at the root cause, why is it every two or three months there's somebody who wants to go on strike? Mm -hmm. I really think it has something to do with the standard of living. Mm -hmm. uh, you know commodities have been going high, uh, petrol, which means transport. In the last one month or so, in fact, we're joking with Moshimu Abarua, we're wondering if the UNGA issue is going to come up today. <laughs> and yes, it will come up. Because, you know, those are some of the things that if your UNGA used to cost this much in 2013 and now it costs more than double and your salary has not been doubled, then you begin to struggle. Because mm -hmm. everything goes up, your rent goes up, <coughs> your transport goes up, your school fees for your children go up, and so on and so forth. So standard of living has just gone through the roof in the last four years and people's salaries are remaining the same. So they're resulting now to industrial action, which is the only thing they could do. Mm. So we need to start thinking very seriously on how we can bring back down the standard of living. Because mm. you can't sustain this high wage bill. Mm. Uh, if it goes up, we'll now start as governments spending all the money paying salaries instead of developing our country. Mm -hmm. I think uh, sometimes my friend uh, Deputy Governor amazes me because uh, <laughs> <laughs> And he's, a, he's, a, he's an interesting gentleman. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Even if we are discussing hospital issues, it goes back to <laughs> I think that's a, that's a problem of prioritization. Mm -hmm. And I think you can discuss Unga at his own time, mm -hmm. then um, uh, hospital at his own time. <laughs> and in fact, uh, when he, when I, I remember um, um, we met at the reception. Mm -hmm. He asked me whether I have Unga in my house. And, uh, <laughs> But what I'm saying is that the issue is this is this is mm. extremely serious. Mm. The issue of health. Let me give an example of my count. Mm -hmm. Because I give examples what I know. Right. Uh for the last four years the priorities were upside down. What they started doing, I had Mike saying they started by adding hospital beds, mm. which I think is a good thing. I think it's exactly a good thing. Mm -hmm. But in my county of Kirinyaga, what they did, they started constructing about 30 or 35 clinics. Up to now, in the last five, four years, 
none of them is operational mm. so that is actually having priorities ups and down me my thinking was we should have started by actually ensuring that we have five sub counties let us have each sub county with an operational hospital with a few beds and maternity wings where people can get services from there we expand outside and that's why I'm insisting again the county government, the, the idea of devolution is great and good but it must be taken <coughs> care as at the moment there are very few governments, county governments that can handle, fully handle the issue of health this is basically because the governor wherever he is or she is is a needed person in terms of votes so instead of handling this issue very professionally and objectively they have handled it politically and commercially mm -hmm. so we need to get another level of governors who can see things from a very objective and practical forward-looking way mm -hmm. that's my take all right so you, uh, just uh, just remember you didn't ask the question about do you think it should be systematic or because i mean yes nairobi is doing pretty well at five to one and one hundred and five maybe it's not doing but very well it but uh, <laughs> it's from his opinion from his opinion yeah yeah from his opinion uh, so is it to <coughs> be systematic in terms of the you know devolution <coughs> the way to build more capacity is it a question of management of funds is it like he said more political and commercial than it is uh, prioritized uh you know <coughs> not longer um <laughs> 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 um um, it's not my opinion that we are doing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, you see, you can't. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Mm -hmm. So what we do uh, in the county, the governor and myself, we usually measure our progress, and that's the only way you can know if you are making progress or not. Now, the measurement of healthcare is how many people are you able to treat. Yeah, outpatient in 2012 were able to treat 1.1 million people in that year. Last year in 2016, we were able to treat 1.7 million people. That's a half a million people more that we've been able to treat that before would not be able to get health care. To me, that's some form of progress. Inpatient a month, inpatient, we used to do 6,000 people, people who were able to come and sleep in our hospitals. Now we're able to do 17,000. <coughs> that's an increase of almost 300%, almost three times. To me, that's progress. In 2012, we were able to spend about 150 million shillings a month buying drugs for our hospitals. Yeah? Now we are spending 240 million shillings every month buying drugs. Which means that when you go to hospital and you are treated, before in 2012, the doctors and the nurses used to tell you, you have this disease, here's a prescription, go across the street to that private pharmacy and spend 500 shillings on drugs. Now they tell you, here's your prescription, go around the corner and get your drugs for free. I mean, that's, that's the difference and that's the progress that you want to be able to see to make sure that you're moving forward. So, health should be fully devolved. Mm -hmm. In Nairobi, we have seen the gains properly. Of course, all counties are different. That's why we are unique. Uh, but health care should be a priority to every governor. Some have been able to handle it better than others. All I'm saying is that in Nairobi, if health was not devolved, the people of Nairobi would not have gotten the benefits that they get now. Mm -hmm. uh, we complain and still think it was wrong for the national government to continue holding to some of the functions of health. For example, this big uh, 38 billion shilling machine uh, list that they went and list out for the counties. Yeah. For Nairobi it was able to work for us because we have internet, we have uh, electricity, uh, we have people who are trained to be able to use those facilities so it could work. But some of those machines are lying idle in some countries like Masabit, like Isiolo, because they are remote, they don't have the infrastructure for internet, and they're supposed to be used for telemedicine, where you go, you get checked, and then that image is emailed to a doctor in Nairobi to see what ailment you have and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Those facilities now are not being used because there's no internet, there's no electricity in those remote areas. So the governor of Massabit or some of those far-flung counties would have used their money better if it had been given to them than buying machines that just sit there lying down doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of devolution. All the counties are unique. So counties have different priorities. And if you don't devolve fully and you are trying to control a devolved function <coughs> from Nairobi, then we are missing the point. Mm -hmm. so and yes, health should be yeah. completely right. fully devolved to the county. Before I, I, I'd like mm -hmm. to ask the deputy government to give me an example 
of a county headquarters in this country which is not connected to electricity. Uh, the beauty of one of them, and I also want to ask you, <laughs> with this, with the, the, the new technology in the internet services, mm. you can hotspot any place. Internet is no longer an issue. Yes. Yeah, the, what, is, what I'm saying is that what you are misleading Kenyans, which is unfortunate, that there is a county headquarters without electricity and without internet. I will challenge you on that. What is happening is the capacity of the county governments to accept mm. to, 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 to use those um, machines mm. and maybe also even to understand about how you can get internet hotspots um, even if you don't have a uh, mainstream electricity of good genitals that do work what I know is that a machine in the community is a benefit it is not a liability we cannot say that these machines are going to be in Nairobi and not in Rodwa Rodwa is in Kenya in Mandera so they must be there in Wajia they must be there but I want to tell you clearly there is no county headquarters in this country without electricity and you have mentioned see in other countries these are not countries they are counties <laughs> Mr. my friend in your <laughs> but I want you to get a response maybe it was a slip of the tongue <laughs> yeah. but to answer you uh, yeah. Mr. Barua yes you see the beauty of devolution mm. is not just to the county headquarters yes even in the county governments act it says that governors have a duty and a mandate to devolve yes. the services even further. Yes, yes. Yeah. So while Lodwa, <coughs> which is uh, yeah, the, uh, the, county the, the, the county headquarters for Turukana, mm. could have the infrastructure, mm. what about deep interior? But you have to start from somewhere. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Yes. If you send that machine deep they interior were, they of Turukana, they were taken to the county headquarters because they are starting from somewhere. No. Then the next level, we got the, uh, as, you, but you, as you get to the next my point. Yes. Uh -huh. The governor of Turukana, mm. yeah has okay. also a duty to devolve health services exactly so that somebody doesn't have to come from 250 Absolutely. kilometers away to Lodwa to get yes, health care yes, yes. so he has opened a clinic mm. somewhere deep maybe somewhere in Kakuma yes yeah mm. where electricity has not reached there yet it's, it's there and there. where hotspots are only there mm. if you have internet to a certain level that's why you see people digging to put the fiber or to put the infrastructure then once you have that you can hotspot it exactly you just don't hotspot from yeah, there Okay, so now in that health center deep interior of Turukana where Governor Nanok has devolved health services yeah. and you have gone and put a machine there that needs electricity and internet, that machine is lying idle because there is no infrastructure in that place. But how many sets of machines were bought per county? Yes, it's one. No, so one no. gone the county no, 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 no. <laughs> several, several. <laughs> no. Of course, I guess uh, <laughs> the issue that I'm coming on because is a matter that we have to say systematic. Mm. It's also a matter <coughs> clearly also of management because of the function, mm. the additional function of the government to devolve it further. And of course, we're going to uh, we want to take a short break though, and when we come back, we're going to be talking uh, more about uh, <laughs> Unga. Unga. <laughs> 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 And also the politics of the day, quite an eventful uh, weekend that was there. So we're going to be talking about that. Stay with us.